Mm -hmm. Then our next person up is Halima. Uh, but let's just see, anybody else, any things in the chats, we're good? Awesome. Okay, I, yeah, I don't have anything here either. Okay. Cool. All right, so thank you, Amanda. Welcome. And Halima, give me one sec. I'm going to make you co-host in a second in case there's anything you want to share as well. Okay. There we go. Thank you, everybody. Halima, are you good? Can you see? Are you on here? She is on here. I just don't see her on, on there. I mean, I can see her in the list of participants. I just don't see her on here. Let's see. Hi, Dan. Hi, there you are. Hey. Hi. <laughs> okay. You can hear me. I think um, I need to turn on my camera. Yeah, the video. Right. You can do that there, right? Yeah, there you go. Okay, let me stop sharing this screen here. So this is Halima who's going to be, whoop, this is Halima who's going to be working up next and talking about mom burnout. But Halima, is it fair to say all parents, any caregivers could also benefit from what you're about to share with us? Yes, most definitely. I have made um, my talk to be inclusive for everybody. You don't have to be a mom to go through. I mean, you don't have to be a mom to benefit from what I'm going to share. You, even if you are um, just working, you don't have kids, it all applies to you. If you are a caregiver or um, somebody who takes care of um, their, their parents or grandparents or just anything else, anybody, anybody, it's, it's all applies to you. Yeah, yeah. So Halima, did you have something on screen that you wanted to share or did you want to have more of an open forum? I forgot to ask your format. Right. Um, I have something that I want to share. I have a PowerPoint. Okay. I think I'm not really um, like good at all of these things. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> you, have, you should have um, the share screen option on the bottom. There's like a tool that should say right. share screen. If you click on that, a little window should pop up and okay. it'll give you some windows of things that you can see. So wherever your PowerPoint lies. And then once you're, you're on there, you can hit start or, you know, start this slideshow. show. Um, okay. and then your photo should be off to the to the right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me know if you have any issues there, because if, if so, we can we can talk and ask questions, or you know you can share with us um, text via chat if it's not working for you. Right. Right. And to give some background, Halima and I used to be classmates together. Yeah. Way back Dina. in the day. <laughs> Dina. Dina is such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful colleague. Thank you, Helena. Yeah. It's been very lovely to see you grow as well. So I, pre I appreciate that we're keeping in touch because that's, that's something that is near and dear to my heart to make sure that I keep in touch with my friends. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, can I start? Yeah, Zina? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Do you want to hit start slideshow or whatever so we can see it a little bit bigger? Okay. Mm. Slideshow. New share. Wait, go to the right. See where it says animations? That little two arrows over there? Those little two arrows next to animations um, on the top? I think, right? Is that where we are? Yep, keep going. Get, make a right, make a right, keep going right. Where it says animations, there's a little two arrows next to that to a larger screen. Mm. Where it says insert, draw, design. You were right there. Yeah, keep going. Okay, okay. Yeah, right there. Animations. There's two little arrows to the right. Click on the arrows. I don't see animation. You don't? Mm -mm. Oh, that's weird. Okay. So we're not seeing the same thing. Okay. No worries. That's okay. You're, you're still good. We can still see the slide. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, my topic today is parental burnout or mom burnout, just as um, Dina said earlier. Um, first of all, I want to thank you, Dina, for organizing this. It's wonderful and inviting me to be part of it. Um, I have benefited from um, the couple of guest speakers who came earlier before me and wonderful, wonderful information they've shared. And I hope that whatever I'm going to share will be benefiting somebody else somewhere. 
Um, yeah. So. Halima, okay. don't worry about that. I'll let, I'll let them in. I'll take okay. care of the admitting people. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So, um, like Dina said, I used to be her colleague in class. I was her classmate. But right now, <laughs> I am a mom of twin girls. They are only toddlers. They, are, they, they just turned three years. Okay. And I know that it is hard. Anybody who has gone through being a mother, whether you have one child, two children, three, or you just have maybe a pet or a cat or a dog taken care of, you're taking care of something, you know how hard it is to take care of somebody, a human being, or something that has life in it. It's not easy at all. Oh, am I making a, um, an eye contact? I feel like I'm looking at myself or you. <laughs> yeah, you're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. It's not easy at all. Okay. So um, I just want to share. I know that there's a lot of people who share a lot of things on social media, on the internet, on the blog, um, people telling, um, giving um, inf um, knowledge about um, schedule, making a schedule as a mom, um, trying to journal, try to get a um, group to mom group to join and also talk it out and all of those things. Okay, I want to take it to a different perspective, just slightly different perspective and see if hopefully that would help somebody else. If you've tried all of those things that you've seen before on the internet or from books and all of that. Okay. So um, I, I have done some research a little bit and I want to define what mom burnout is and um, how you can know if you are going through any mom burnout and everything. So what is, Parental burnout or parental burnout, for instance. What is parental burnout? Parental burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive or prolonged stress. So you know that you are stressed as a mother or as a caregiver or as a, an employee. You are stressed, but the stress is a long-term stress. You cannot seem to be um, relieved of that tiredness. You are always tired. You feel like you are exhausted. You don't have any um, pleasure in what you do anymore. You feel like you are, you, your, your neck is being held and you can't even breathe. That is when burnout is said to get to you. Okay. So research show that Parental burnout seems to be unique from other types of burnout. So if you are a parent and you are going through all of these things, there is uniqueness in what you are going through than occupational burnout, than any other burnout somebody else is going through. Why? Because even though parental burnout can seem similar to parent, parental related stress, parental burnout goes far beyond a typical stress. It's not the usual stress everybody's talking about. This is a chronic high level parental related stress due to a mismatch between the demands of parenting and the resources available for parents to meet those demands. So demands of parenting. For instance, you have a car and you want to take your child to school, right? And you have a million things to do. So what is the resources? The resources will be to go out and look for a school bus or to make a carpool, okay? To make a carpool for some other parents to help take care of, take your child to school instead of you taking the child to school. So the resources um, is not there as compared to the risk of you taking your child to school and then going through the burnout, coming back, being tired and feeling unfulfilled and all of that. So what is the five, there's the five main factors to parental burnout. There is 
things that make us to go through all of those things. So parental, parents who experience burnout experience both physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion. This include feeling of extreme exhaustion, like I said before, loss of pleasure and fulfillment in parenting, emotional distancing from children. And that is, is something that a lot of people go through. We love our children. We will die for them. <laughs> but once a parent hits the burnout stage, then you feel like you don't have any connection with your child. You feel like your child is just getting on your way and all of that all of those things that you've been saying, I love you, I want you, I, all of that, you don't even say it and you mean it, okay? So um, sense of incompetency in the role of parents. You feel like you are not competent to be a parent, you are not competent to be a caregiver and feeling of being trapped in an uncomfortable situation without a way out. Like I said before, you feel like you're choking. Oh my God, what is going on? Okay, so um, I know that there, there's no time. I have written a whole lot. <laughs> so I'll just go straight to the point um, with how you can manage burnout, okay? Um, I have written just three, just three um, ways that you can avoid burnout. First is prayer. I listened to an earlier guest speaker who um, I think she's discussing meditation and she mentioned about prayer. And I'm like, yes, it hit hard. It hit home hard because prayer is one of the antidotes that nobody else can give you but yourself. Prayer can help you with a whole lot of things. And there are research showing that being spiritual or being prayerful can help you with a lot of um, distressing, with, can help you to distress, can help a lot of people who are going through um, chemotherapy, can help people who are going through a whole lot of life hassles and bustles and all of that. So if you, as parents, our last resource, when we go through all of um, dealing with taking all of the information, trying to take control of parenting, doing all of those things, prayer is the last thing we get to. We forget that that is the first. That is the first thing we should always aspire to get to, okay? And I, I call prayer as an IV to our body. Okay, if somebody is sick, somebody goes to the hospital and the person is dehydrated, the person that is not able to eat, or that person is just at the last minute of life. Okay, what do the hospital do? The hospital professionals, the first thing they do is to put an IV on that person, right? So we use prayer. We should use prayer as parents. Because I believe that we became parents not because it's just easy or we want to be parents, but if you are a parent, it's a godly, it's a godly job. Nobody teaches you to be a parent on earth. You go to school, you have your PhD and all of those things. Nobody will teach you this is how to be parent. This is how to parent one particular child and the other child, this is how you parent. No, every child is different. So it is very, very, very difficult. It's very hard and it's challenging. But prayer is like the antidote, okay? Prayer can help you to ask God to be patient. Through prayers, you ask God to be patient for yourself and for your children. Through prayers, you can ask God to be balanced, to, for, for God to help you to be balanced. Sometimes we take control of all of what we want to do. We want to um, um, tackle this. We want to tackle that. We want to tackle that. And at the end of the day, because it is not a willpower, parenting is not a willpower, okay? Then we find that we are not getting there right? But when we use prayer as a sword, 
as a sword to cut down all the noise, to cut down all of other things, that prayer is it's going to be like a blueprint. It's going to be like a roadmap telling you, this is how you're going to do it. This is how the parenting is going to be. Just um, go through it. There's guidance. There's like straight up guidance for you to follow. I know my time is up already. <laughs> okay. So, and I'm, I'm going to just go through quickly. Um, another um um, point that I want to also mention, I cannot just leave it out, Dina, please just bear with me, is to fill up your tank, okay? When you try to fill up your tank and you fill up God's tank first, right? Through prayers, through being spiritual and asking God to help you with parenting, you try to fill up your tank second, okay? For instance, when when you when you have a journey to go cross country and that journey requires you to fill up your tank right the first thing you do is to fill up your tank and check all your bricks and take your car to the service and check everything is okay before you take the road right but do we just wait sometimes to ask ourselves as parents we are juggling all of these things. Do we ask ourselves, have we checked our break? Have we checked the, the, the side mirrors? Have we checked the, um, the hazards? Is the tank full? Is there water in the tank? Did we take our phone? Did we take our charger? Do we ask ourselves all, the, all of those things? Do we do those things? as parents because we are and we are doing the greatest job the hardest job it is our responsibility to ask ourselves and fill up our tank for ourselves with good nourishing food okay for our tank with good information for our tank with okay we wake up in the morning this is what we have to do before our kids wake up this is what I have to do. This is what I have to do. Or even if you are taking care of an elderly person, you know that you have to fill up your tank because you cannot fill up the elderly person's tank without filling up your tank, right? You cannot. So as parents, we have to strive. We have to try and remember to fill up our tank and make it important. First, I want to say that sometimes they say, fill up your tank first. It doesn't matter if you fill up your tank first. What matters is you fill up your tank, whether you fill up your tank second or third or fourth, just fill up your tank, okay? Um, Dina. Yes, <laughs> I, think, I think I can go on, but if um, I know there are some guest speakers waiting to get in. And my Do we have, well, I was going to ask you, um, we have a couple of people lined up and a lot of people who are text who are chatting me right now are saying thank you so much for sharing what you have. So are you going to be staying online with us or do you have to go? Um, I can stay for a little bit, but I can come back later because I have to check on the girls. Yeah, too. I was going to say, if you want to, then I can put you in a breakout room and maybe you can have some discussions with some people because one, uh, Michelle here said that she wants to talk to you about doing a presentation with her work because she has a lot of moms there and other people are saying, thank you so much. They wish you had that. They wish they had met you before when they had kids. Because oh, this, this is you. very helpful, oh, but no, to share with us, we have about one more minute. Why don't you, why don't you wrap up if you can? And before I go into the next, the next guest, um, okay. is there, what is you, what do you feel like is maybe the, the last thing that you want to share with us or, um, or, you know, your final, your final message? Cause this has been lovely and it's and honestly, it feels like it's applicable to every human. So thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you, Dina. Thank you. And I appreciate that you give me um, <laughs> a little bit of time <laughs> to um, wrap up. Okay, so I want to just mention one more because I know that this is my problem. And I know a lot of parents too will go through that or any caregiver will go through that. Sometimes we forget to fill the tummy, okay? We forget to fill our tummy. Now research is showing that gut health connects with our brain, right? 
But what our tummy, what our stomach also, what we don't know about our stomach is when it's empty, there are hormones that are generated. The hormones that change our mood to the negative uh, mood. And when we fill up our tank, when we, I mean, when we fill, when we eat properly and we nourish our body and we are not hungry, okay? We are not hungry as in there is no food in our tummy. When taking care of our children, you see that you are calm, you are collected, you take your time to listen, you take your time to give praise to yourself and to the person you are giving um, care to. Because one thing is when we are hungry, we tend to be angry. So when parents, we forget that we have to eat. We forget, like Dina, you are a dietitian. You know the importance of, of, of all of those things. But I wanted to mention it because I want it to be relatable to you too. Like, you know that nourishment through food is just not because we want to be looking good and we want to have all the apps and we want to exercise and all of that. But because we want to control the hormones that are generated in our body. Because when we put the good food in our body, the good hormones are generated and we tend to be calm. Calm parents, everything will be going on. Our kids will be going crazy. Everything is just overwhelming, but we are peaceful. Prayers, filling our tongue, filling our tummy, all of those things help us to be peaceful. And when we are peaceful, the sink can be full. The dishwasher can be full. The laundry cannot be kept, okay? The laundry would be full. We have to do all of those things, but we will be peaceful. And being peaceful means there's a more chance, absolutely more chance of us not burning out. So I hope that just a little bit, I know it's, it's, it's a whole lot I can say, but the time is not enough. But I hope this that I've said is beneficial to somebody, even if it is one person. Parenting is hard, it's difficult, there's no manual to it. But if you take that manual that God has given you, because he created you, he also helped you to bring forth the children. So he knows us best. So when we go back to him and also we've tried to fill the tank that he has given us a special body to be of service to humankind and also fill our body with the right food and right nutrition, God willing, God willing, we will be peaceful we will see as ourselves being the wonderful parents, even if all the noises are going on, because we would not, we would not aspire to be perfectionism. I mean, perfectionist. We would not aspire to be um, in control. We know that there is a higher being who is in control, right? So this is what I want to leave you with. And I hope that it's not like preaching, preaching, but that is how much I can say because that has helped me a lot too. And I am, I am even happier that research has proven some of what I have said too. So if you are interested in like um, the papers that I, I got that support spirituality and prayers with parenthood and burnout, I can send that to you so you can also read anybody who is interested. Halima, I think I'll add that to, we have a post event email that's going to go out in about a week where we're going to include um, the bios again of everybody who spoke. Some of our guests have some like giveaways and things that they're doing. And Zoe, who was just on, she has a recipe that she's going to include in that. So I'll, if you want to send it to me, I'll include it as a package next week when we send it out to the 
to the uh, to the attendees. Thank you okay. so much. I love okay. what you said about the gut brain thing. That is huge. When Thanks. this isn't working, you can't digest. When your tummy is all a wreck, you can't think properly. And you're so right about making sure that you're filling your own tank and filling yourself because you can't give from an empty cup or gas tank or stomach. Um, and this kind of ties into a lot of things that we talked about before with the meditation discussion and yeah. who we have coming up later on with um, coach B. She's going to be talking about the importance of loving yourself first, making sure that we are giving uh, ourselves what we need so that we can give to others. So thank you again, Halima. I very much appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dina. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, you can still hang out if you want to. Yes, I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. Stop I'm like, yeah, let me stop with the recording here.